In today's video, we are going to go over a detailed step-by-step -step explanation of how a Bain bridge mass spectrometer works. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step-by-Step -step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Again, when I look at my analytics, I see that a lot of people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Support my channel. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. Share this video. In addition, I made a bunch of our teaching and learning materials, which you can find at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. It's all there. Practice problems, examples with the solutions, notes, and a bunch of other good stuff. You can find the link in the description below. And let's get started. Now, this is a nice schematic for a Bain bridge mass spectrometer. We have an ion source, our accelerator. We have the velocity selector, and we have the detector. Bainbridge mass spectrometers are typically used to determine the atomic mass of different atoms. And we are going to go through a step-by-step -step explanation of how the ion source and the accelerator works, how the velocity selector works, and how the detector works. If we have, for example, like a positively charged particle right here, it is going to be accelerated through the ion source. We're going to make sure we have the ones of just the velocity that we want, as it moves through the velocity selector so that we can then spread out and detect and separate those uh, atoms based on their mass in our detector like that. And it's going to travel in that curved path. And we're going to talk all about that as we go through each of those three steps. And we're going to start off, of course, with our ion source. And for the ion source, we want to answer this question. Calculate the velocity that a singly charged lead 208 ion will have when it exits the ion source. Now here is our positively charged ion, and uh, we have removed one, from which we have removed one electron. We have our positively charged plate, and we have our negatively charged plate, and those ions are gonna move through that acceleration voltage, and the acceleration voltage is 350 volts between those two plates. And when that positively charged particle moves through there, it's going to be moving through the electric field, which goes from the positive to the negative plate. And that means it's going to be accelerated in that direction because of the electric force. And we want to know what the velocity is going to be when it exits that source and our accelerator like that. And we can calculate that velocity because we know that when that positively charged particle is right there against that positively charged plate, it is going to have some potential energy, and the potential energy is calculated as W is equal to Q, the charge, times the acceleration voltage, the voltage through which it's going to move, and it's going to have potential energy, and when it moves through that electric field and is accelerated, that potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy is the energy of motion, which you all know is one-half mv squared, and of course, the potential energy here is going to be equal to the kinetic energy here. So we can set those two equations equal to each other and solve for the velocity right here. This is the velocity we want to solve for. That's the velocity that that charged particle is going to, be, is going to have when it exits the ion source. And we want to solve for V. That means the easy thing to do, I think, is to first multiply by 2, get rid of the 1 half divide by m, move it to the other side, and take the square root, and that will give us that the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the charge times the potential through which it's going to move divided by the mass. Now, we know all these other things, not all these other things, we know the charge, we know the potential, but we don't know the mass, but we know it's lead 208, so we can calculate the mass pretty easily because it's lead 208, that's the mass number, that's the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of that lead atom. And we know that those protons and neutrons have the same mass, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And there we just multiply that by 208, because that's how many there are. And that will give us the mass of that lead ion is 3.45 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. And the rest we just plug into our equation. We know the two is a two. The charge, it said singly charged, and we're going to remove one electron, so that means that that lead ion is going to have a positive charge of 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. It's going to move through that voltage, and that's the mass we just calculated. So that means that that lead ion is going to have, is going to have a velocity of 18,000 meters per second, or we can say 18 kilometers per second. 
All right, that's part one, the ion source and our accelerator. Okay, now we want to make sure that only those atoms that have that velocity, 18,000 meters per second, come out of our velocity selector. Our velocity selector consists of two charged plates, positively and negatively charged plates. They're like a capacitor, so we have our voltage for our capacitor, the voltage across the plates, which is 110 volts. The distance is 12 centimeters. But in addition to the electric field from those plates, we're also going to have a magnetic field. And the magnetic field is what we want to solve for. We want to know what magnetic field strength we need so that, so that those lead ions traveling at 18,000 meters per second will pass through, and only those will pass straight through when we uh, enter when they enter into our velocity selector because they're going to travel straight through like that. We want them to travel straight through like that. And then in the, right in there when they're inside the velocity selector, there is going to be an electric force and a magnetic force. The a force from the electric field is going to come from the electric field, which goes from the positive plate to the negative plate, and that's going to push that electron, excuse me, that's going to push that lead ion up like that with the electric force. That means we need a magnetic force, which is acting in the opposite direction, the Lorentz force, and that's going to be pointing down. And just because it's so much fun to try and figure it out with the right-hand rule, the particle is moving from left to right. The force has to be down. So using our right hand, we can see that that magnetic field would have to be pointing out of the page like that, and that designates out of the page for the direction of that magnetic field. Okay, now we want to figure out what the velocity is going to be, and we know that the force from the electric field can be calculated as charge times E, the electric field strength. We know that the Lorentz force from the magnetic field can be calculated as the force is equal to Q, the charge, times the velocity, times B, the magnetic field strength. We want to solve this equation for B, and we know that those two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, so we can set them equal to each other. The Qs will cancel because it's the same charge, and that means it's the electric field strength is equal to V times the magnetic field strength. We want to solve for the magnetic field strength, which is the magnetic field strength is equal to the electric strength times the velocity. The electric field strength we don't know, because, but we do know the charge, excuse me, we do know the voltage between the plates, and we do know their distance, so we can, of course, calculate the electric field strength using this equation, which says that the voltage between the plates is equal to the electric field strength times the distance. We know the voltage. We know the distance. Solving for E, you get the voltage divided by the distance. The voltage is 150 volts. The distance is 0 0.12 meters. Convert your centimeters into meters, and you get electric field strength of 1,250 volts per meter. Then we can just put that into our equation, 1,250 volts per meter divided by 18,000 meters per second. Make sure you leave that as meters per second so that those volts, those meters will cancel. And you get a magnetic field strength of 69.4 milliteslas. If we have this electric field strength and we have this magnetic field strength, then we know that those particles that are traveling at 18,000 meters per second will pass straight through the velocity selector. Any that are traveling more or less slowly will be filtered out. And therefore, when we get to our detector, we'll know the velocity, we'll know the magnetic field strength, we'll know the charge, and we can separate those out from each other by their mass, OK? We can separate the charged particles by their mass. Now, we want to know, if we have our lead 208, we want to know what distance, at what distance will they strike the selector after enter the detector after entering the magnetic field. Okay? Now we can figure out that distance. This is the distance we're trying to figure out. And we can figure out that distance because we know that this curved path that those particles are going to tra travel on is due to two things. So we can calculate two different ways. One way is with the Lorentz force, which points directly to the center of that circle. This is a half circle. And that centripetal force can be calculated as mv squared over r. That comes from Newton's second law, which is f equals ma. And the acceleration on a curved path is v squared over r. Now, that can be calculated with the centripetal force. We can also calculate it with the Lorentz force. 
And that is simply, as we said before, QVB. Those two forces would be equal to each other because they're creating the same path. So we can set them equal to each other. And we want to solve for R, the distance. Now, the R is just going to be this distance, the radius. So we can double that, and we'll get how far, that where they'll de um, strike the detector. Let's see, what can we do here? We can s s cancel this V and one of these Vs because it's the same velocity. And then we are going to solve for R. We're going to multiply, cross multiply and then divide by QB, which will give us R is equal to M, the mass, times the velocity divided by Q times the charge times the magnetic field strength. That's our B2 magnetic field strength, which is 1.3 Teslas. And there we go. All that stuff, the mass is 3.45 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. The velocity in meters per second, 18,000. The charge is still 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 because we removed one electron. And then the magnetic field strength through which it's charging. This is the other magnetic field strength, okay, not the 69.4 milliteslas, but this is 1.30 teslas, that this is magnetic field here. And therefore, we get that the radius is just about 0 0.03 meters or 3 centimeters. That's this distance halfway across. And that means we have to double that, and we'll get that that distance y is equal to 6 centimeters. Okay? That is how far that will travel before it strikes the detector after entering that second magnetic field. Okay? So there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. We went through how the acceleration works. We went through how the velocity selector works. We went through how the detector works like that. And we calculated all those values. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my, my channel. Support step-by-step -step science. Get all our excellent videos. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you in the next video.